Tell us a little bit more about uh, your campaign issues, such as uh, safe streets, uh, crime activity. Um, I mean, I'm pushing very hard for safe streets. I, I truly believe that that we that a, the biggest piece of what we need to be focused on in the state uh, is focusing on the gang violence issue, and and it's and it's moving. You know, there is gang violence in Trenton. There's gang violence in Ewing. There is some gang violence in Princeton, um, and it's spreading continuously. And we've got to go after that. We need to start off with a zero tolerance policy on that, as a lot of other cities did. And you go back to look at New York under, under Giuliani. I mean, what they did there, they started off with zero tolerance and they clamped down on all crime. And that's what we need to start first. We need to provide, and as part of that, we need to provide our police with the, uh, the tools and the resources they need to be able to fight crime and be able to stay on top in surveillance and surveillance and keep the gangs under control. We also need to pass laws to make sure that, that, that we disrupt gang activity. Everything from, from bonds to making sure that, that bail bonds are, that we control that we know where that money's coming from for bail bonds. There's mandatory sentences for those who use illegal guns that, that get, bring in illegal guns into the state and to use those guns. On the other side of the equation, so that's kind of the enforcement part of it, and that's an important part. The other part of it that we have to address is the social side of it. You know, we need to be able to, to catch these kids early on and give them and teach them what it means to be in gangs. So we're catching them early on. We also need to have safe places for them to go after school every day. So they don't they don't get pulled into gangs. They got a safe place to go. They know they can they got other activities going on, whether those are libraries, whether those are churches, whether what's going on, but we need a place for those kids to go. Probably and probably most importantly, the long-term problem we've got to solve is we got to we've got to find jobs. We've got to build jobs, we've got to create jobs, especially in cities like Trenton. You know, I mean, that's where the most acti the activity is going, in part, in part of that in Ewing, but the biggest piece in Trenton. You know, the part of the reason gang violence grows is because for a lot of these kids, and, and let's face it, a lot of them aren't kids. There's, there's men in their 40s and 50s that run mm -hmm. gangs at this point in time, so it's turning generational at this point. But, you know, for a lot of these kids coming up, they start seeing the opportunity of selling drugs, and that's a big piece of the money for the, for the gangs, is selling drugs versus nothing, and because they, they don't have jobs. We're not creating good jobs. Uh, in, in Trenton, businesses are not moving in Trenton, so I'd like to see a real full redevelopment of Trenton, build, get companies to come in there, uh, create some building trades and a lot more building trade skills for a lot of kids coming up. Let's get them some good jobs, and we get them good jobs, they've got an alternative to joining gangs. So that's a big piece of it. Okay, tell us a little bit about uh, the open space or the environmental issues mm -hmm. that are in this uh, campaign cycle. Well, there's a couple parts to it. I mean, number one, you mentioned the open space issue. Uh, there's, a, there's a question on the ballot this year that will approve about $200 million for basically one year of funding for open space. It will protect uh, open space, farmland, some historical sites underneath that. And it goes into the preservation trust in the state. So that money, so there's, it's basically putting out a bond for one year. I mean, I support that, though what it doesn't do is it's not a long-term solution. What we need, I mean, we've, been, we've saved... Just we've saved thousands and thousands of acres with the preservation trust. I mean, it goes back to the Christ, Christy Todd Whitman's administration as governor, and we've continued to save lots of land in this state to protect it. It's interesting. Uh, and the statistic is that they say by the year 2030, uh, all the land in this state will be fully uh, developed or, or controlled in some way or other by by 2030. So we need to we need to fight that. It, it, we're going to be battling developers to a certain degree and, and manage growth. I mean, I want to see growth in this state. But it's got to be managed, and we need to be able to, to manage that. And, but, and so we want to protect that land. So we, much of that space we can't protect, we need to. So the, the, the bond issue, uh, the people will, it's on the ballot, so voters can vote for it. Um, that'll protect us for one year or get us some more land for one year. What we really need is a long-term solution. We need funding over the next 10 to 20 years to be able to, to buy and buy lots of land and protect that land for our families for the future, to keep New Jersey green going forward. Um, the other part of my, that, that I'm putting forward for a policy on uh, a greener New Jersey deals with uh, the, the whole aspect of uh, the environment. Uh, last year we passed, a, uh, the legislature passed and the governor signed kind of a global uh, warming bill and, it, was, and it, was, it set some incredibly great targets. I mean they're out in the future but they've set some incredible targets for, for containing greenhouse gases in the future and, and rolling us back in New Jersey and I, and I thought that's, I think that's wonderful that the governor's doing that and that he's, he's working on that and he's pushed that forward. The problem, you know, the problem is, is that bill that passed didn't have a lot of specifics in it. It, it laid out 
a lot of generalities and it passed over to the Department of Environmental Protection to go frame out a lot more details going forward. So we need, I, I, what I'd like to see is the legislature to take up that and, and drive a lot more of those changes into that. And do you have any of those specifics in, in mind? Well, I mean, there's a, there's a few things uh, in there. Just, I mean, setting, setting things, everything looking at auto emissions, looking at power plant emissions, looking at, at emissions from, from companies and all the rest of that. Carbon trading, and that was not a major piece of the, of the legislation. And so uh, there, there needs a, there's a lot more things that can be added to it. Uh, even in you know even California when they passed their their bill which basically New Jersey paralleled that bill and mimicked it pretty closely in, in at least the the targets that are in there in California they put a lot of more a lot more specifics of how to achieve it and, and Governor Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger pushed that and drove that initiative there so uh, I, I'd like to see New Jersey put a lot more specifics in there and, and drive that agenda it's interesting too you know on the environmental front um, there's because other parts of, of of the policy I've been pushing forward. Other aspects of it are, are deal with um, protecting our groundwater, protecting our reservoirs. I mean, what's happening in New Jersey too is as, as a lot of open space continues to be bought up, what happens is all the development around reservoirs starts to get squeezed. Well, you know what? A, a lot of that land around it helps to protect that reservoir and what, go, what flows into it and all the rest. So I think it's extremely important that we protect our reservoirs and we protect groundwater. So my, you know, the plan I put forward focuses on that very heavily. In addition, um, I focused on uh, brownfield sites. I don't believe, I mean, we're trying to, brownfield sites, as you know, are, are sites where industrial plants have been. They may have been in the 30s, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, where the ground is contaminated now. So you've got you've to find a way to either cap it, mm -hmm. dig it up, and, and remove that soil. So that you can build, put new buildings in. I don't think we put enough time and effort and investment into uh, that land because that land can be used for, you know, for more new industrial sites. It can be used for, for buildings, but we've got to be careful. I mean, I, I know we've had problems in the state where we've tried building schools or, or playgrounds and some of that, which has turned out to be a disaster. But, but there's a lot of industrial sites. If it's done properly, that land becomes very usable and becomes cheap land that we can then turn around and build, build, have companies come in, uh, build buildings on it, and create jobs. And I think that's kind of a cool way to go look at, at some of those brownfield sites. So I'd like to see that happen.